Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I believe that you're going to see a victory this morning. Yes, yes, yes. In your life, whatever you're facing, you will see a victory in Jesus' name. Yes, yes. Oh, we're going to see a victory. Weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. And when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Oh my God will never fail. Do y'all believe that this morning?
Hallelujah. I feel a heaviness in the room today. I feel a real heaviness in the room today. I feel discouragement in the room today. I feel weakness and weariness in the room today. And that's okay. That's okay. Everything isn't always gonna be popping up petunias and turning out tulips when you come into the church house. But the church is meant to be a hospital for the broken. And I wanna share a scripture with you. You know, everything is prophetic. That's what our pastor teaches us. And this song, it's so powerful. You know, we never just get up here to sing songs and go through the motions. We're making prophetic decrees and declarations. We're looking at what the facts say and we're speaking truth. Because right now, many of us are in the middle of our battle. We're in the middle of our battle. We've been fighting and we've been fighting hard and we're tired and we're tired and we're weary. So I wanna share this scripture with you, Exodus 14, 14, it's one of my favorites. It says, the Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. The Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. So you don't have to fight anymore. You can stand and know you can be still and know that he is God that he is the Lord that he is your victor and your victory our victory is already assured that other song said we know how the story ends <laughs> we already we read the back of the book we know that we win and when you're in the midst of a battle and you can't fight anymore you just got to turn that thing over to God and believe and decree and declare that you shall win. That you shall have the victory. That what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn around for, you, for your good. And some of you are looking at your situation like, how in the world could God possibly take this? and turn it around how could God possibly take this and use it for my good so let me testify for just a second so many of you know my my story of late that I was struggling with depression and anxiety suicidal thoughts to the point that I was ready to take my own life had my gun locked and loaded had even googled this I haven't shared I shared in a in a road meeting, I had even Googled uh, the best way to guarantee death in attempting suicide. Like I wasn't trying to have no accidents. I really, really, really believed that it was my time to go and just be with the Lord and, and don't, don't argue doctrine with me right now about what happens to those who commit suicide and, and succeed in their attempt and whether they go to heaven or hell. I don't have time to argue that doctrine with you. That's not what I was interested in at the time. I wasn't thinking about religion. I wasn't thinking about doctrine. I was just thinking that it was time to give up that I just couldn't take it anymore, that I just wanted to, I didn't want to fight anymore. I was tired, I just wanted to go home and be with Jesus. That was, that was my thought process. And I'm Googling, what's the, where's the best way to point this gun so that I can end it. Now, obviously I'm standing here, <laughs> so the victory is the Lord's. And he intervened in that situation in a supernatural way. But you know, suicide and, and anxiety and depression and things that deal with mental health, that's often a really taboo subject in the church and in, and in society overall in our culture. You have to treat mental health, mental illness the same way you would a broken leg, 
I got three claps on that, okay. Ain't nobody in the room ever been depressed. That's okay. That's okay. I'm up here to share my real testimony, not, not my church safe testimony. Anyway, so I thought, well, you know, this is gonna be something I'm, I'm gonna keep to myself because it's a, it's a, there's a lot of shame associated with that type of mental illness and, and suicide and suicidal thoughts, depression. So I'm like, this I'm just gonna keep to myself, I'm not gonna let anybody know about it. The devil lost again there because <laughs> I continue to share my testimony. And that thing that I thought there's no way God could ever turn this around for my good. Well, last night, last night, I posted something on Instagram, just not anything too heavy, not anything overly spiritual, just something fun about shouting through your pain and shouting through your weakness. Elder Bender taught me that it's when your physical body and your natural man, your mind, when your natural man is at its weakest, that is the point where your spirit man takes over. So you're supposed to shout and praise and worship when you don't feel like it, especially when you don't feel like it. Because <laughs> that's when your spirit man takes over. So I just, I just shared that on Instagram, you know, and I put, put my phone down, wasn't gonna pay any more attention to it until this morning. But I was stirred up in my spirit and just kept here and just check your phone. So I looked and, the, and in the comments, there was a young lady who was saying, I wish I could be as happy as you. Cause in this picture, I'm, you know, I've got my church pose, I'm smiling, I'm shouting. She said, I wish I could be as happy as you. I'm sitting here just wanting to end it all. And I was able to minister to her and in that moment where she felt like she had no hope and there was no way out and other people saw that comment and they started encouraging her and uplifting her that's what social media is for you understand it's a it's a platform for ministry and so i was able to minister to her and uh, help her through that moment and God helped me to be able to minister to her and so when we were singing this song I thought that was it that's where what the enemy meant for evil God turned around for my good and not just for my good but for the people that I'm called to minister to because I know that it's easy for us to get caught up in our own pity party. I know that it's easy to have the Charlie Brown spirit. Why is everybody picking on me? Woe is me. Here's the litany of things that are going wrong in my life. It's, it's easy to do that. But you have to step outside of yourself for a minute and, and understand, and, and I'm going to shock some of you with this statement. Are you ready? It's not all about you. It's not all about you. It's about the lost, the hurting, the dying, the depressed, the diseased that are outside of this room. And you say, well, Miss Ashton, what about the what about the depressed and diseased and, and dying and hurting and broken people in this room? The difference is you're here and they're not. You're here in his presence where there is fullness of joy. You're here in his presence where you can find everything you need. You're here where his fire falls down from heaven and burns out everything you don't want and burns out anything you don't need and burns into permanence the promises that he has for you. There's healing and there's hope and there is victory available to you today. Those of you in this room and those of you that are connected to this room by way of watching online and on Facebook, this same anointing is available to you right where you are. There's no screen that can separate the anointing and the presence of God. 
And I just wanted to take this time to encourage you to enter in, in this moment. Don't let your situation and your circumstance define and determine your praise. Don't let your situation and your circumstance define and determine your worship. Don't just sing a song. Don't just go through the motions. Make a prophetic declaration. Stand here in the middle of the battle. Be still and know according to the word of God that he is fighting for you. He is fighting for you. You need only be still. Still in your spirit. That doesn't mean stop giving expression to the life that's in you and stand here like a bump on a log and not enter into his presence. Why wouldn't we want to? I, I don't know about you, but our, our pastor says all the time, anybody can sing a tune on a clear day at noon, but God give me a song to sing at midnight. And some of y'all, you're in your midnight moment right now, and God's given you a song of victory to sing, and you're letting your natural man take over. And you're letting the lies of the enemy roll around in your mind instead of standing on the word of God and that scripture that says the Lord will fight for you you need only be so I'm just gonna keep saying it somebody's gonna get it somebody's gonna get it I don't know Deborah George always says I don't know who I'm sent to I don't know who I'm sent to today but get your glove up and catch it that's what she says Somebody's getting their glove up and catching it today. And I believe that you're going to walk out of this room different than when you came in. You're going to walk out of this room with the assurance and the faith that though you're in the midst of the battle, you know he's already won. He's fighting for you. He's fighting for you. So I want us to pray and I want us to enter back into this song and I'm gonna invite folks down to the altar. I'm gonna invite my, my Valor students down to the altar. Sometimes there's too much separation between us and the altar. <laughs> and the altar isn't just a physical place, you understand. The altar is, is a place in your heart. It's a place in your spirit that you can visit anytime. The Holy Spirit dealt with me very, very strongly last night last get the echo down guys please if and i'm always preaching about the altar and trying to get pastors churches to get their altars back in their churches and to give altar calls now i'm usually speaking about salvation but last night, the Holy Spirit is so gracious. He tapped on me and he said, the altar is for healing. The altar is for presence. The altar is where my Holy Spirit comes to meet with individuals concerning anything in their life they need to talk to me about. Now, Miss Michelle is a worshiper. That's her anointing. And I want you. I don't know what you're fighting, uh, but uh, ele Elevation Worship, my good friend, Pastor Stephen Furtick, and Elevation Worship, I, I think they heard me preaching on that, and they wrote a song called Come to the Altar. That'd be a good one to learn. Come to the Altar. And you know, we're not in any hurry. We, we have some things we're going to do, but right now, God wants to touch you. God wants to, God wants to just meet with you. It's not all about the show. It's not all about the lights. It's, it's not all about whether the song is perfect or not. It's, it's not about the atmosphere in here. It's about the atmosphere that you create when you get to this altar. Because when you come to this altar, you're not coming to meet with me. You're not coming to meet with Harvest Music Live. You're not coming to meet with Elder Canfield. This is the place inside this place that God said, come meet with me put everything on the altar 
Put your cares there. Put your burdens there. Tell me what you need. Tell me what you want. Tell me what's troubling you. Let me heal you. Let me touch you. Come and let's meet together. That's what the Lord is saying right now. So the altar is very, very, very important. That's you making a move toward the presence of God. That's not you being entertained and kind of lifting your hands while somebody else is actually worshiping. This is a place you come. Every one of you come. All we can do is lead you to his altar. All we can do is lead you to his presence. And when you come to this altar, I want you to get in your heart. You're approaching the very throne of God. The blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed you of all unrighteousness and made you worthy, the worthy you were not, to come into his presence. So there in Elkhart as well, if you're watching online, make yourself an altar. Some of the most powerful times my family ever had was when my dad, who was not an overtly spiritual person, would say, all right, get everything off the coffee table and call the family together. We're going to make an altar out of the coffee table. And God, this is my family. I bring my family to the altar. Some of you need to bring your burden to the Lord, old song said, and leave it there. Come on, let's use this altar for what we built it for. Get as in close to it as you can. If you want to kneel, kneel. If you were the first man that ran to this altar this morning, again, is not an overtly spiritual man. And when I saw the Holy Spirit just bring him to that altar and fall down at the altar, my, what that must say to God, when we just come and fall down in front of him and tell him he's worthy and we believe him to take care of any situation in our life. When living makes dying look easy, come to the altar when your body is racked with pain come to the altar when you don't have a dollar to change come to the altar when they say you have to die and you cannot live come to the altar when your husband's walked out on you come to the altar meet with god come on let's worship him let's worship him together the altar is open you want to kneel kneel you want to lift your hands lift your hands Worship him, child. Worship him. Give you rest. Come to me. Come to me.
divine prerogative is God's. The divine prerogative is God's. I'm going to try one more time. The divine prerogative. Let me say it this way. The prerogative belongs to God. That means he starts it. That means he starts it. You see, you have the, you have the idea that because you came to the altar, or because you make a move, or because you're worshiping, you are seeking his face, that you are initiating. But God said, God didn't say that at all. The psalmist said, you have said unto me, seek my face. Therefore thy face, O God, will I seek. Meaning, he starts it. Lift your hands and say, you start it. Say, start a fire in me. Say, give me the want to. Give me the desire. Give me a hunger. Give me a passion. Give me a thirsting after you. As the deer panted for the water brook. Make my soul long after you, oh God. You see, you're trying to do it. You're trying to do it. You don't do it. That is, that is the essence of worship. The essence of worship is surrender, not you doing it. The essence of the anointing is being possessed by his spirit, not by what you think, but letting him take control. He wants to take control of you, not you trying to approach his throne. He already did that. All you have to do is say, God, I'm open. Drag me there if you have to. Kick me there if you have to. But get me there. Give me that overwhelming desire where I know if I can just get to Jesus, every, everything is going to be all right. Watch me now. See thy face, O oh God. Thy face, O oh God. Thy face, O oh God. Notice he didn't say his hand. God didn't say to David, seek my hand, seek my miracle, seek my healing, seek my deliverance. He said, seek my face. I said, he said, seek my face. He didn't say, seek my feet. He didn't say, seek my arm. He He said, seek my face. God said to his servant, you seek my face. What's his face? What's his mouth? What comes from your face? Notice that emojis are not made with the hand. They're made with the face. That's the place of expression. Yeah. One glance gives approval. Yes. One frown gives death. Yeah. That's right. There is blessing in his smile. Yes. There is cursing in his frown. Seek my face. At his face, you see his smile. At his face, you see the brightness of his countenance. At his face, when he smiles on you, he showers you with favor. He says, you're the head. 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 You're not the tail. You're not left behind. You're not left out. Seek my face. Throw your hands up and let God smile at you right now. He's smiling at you right now. Secondly, at his face, we find his word. From his mouth, we find his word. 
do you know that God has a word for you right now that might be repent but that's his word it's his goodness that leads you to repentance so just go ahead and repent did you hear me his word to you might be be healed his word to you might be shout his word to you might be fall down his word to you might be witness his word to you might be tomorrow about this time i don't i don't i dare you to seek a word right now start crying out to it give me a word god give me a word come on give me a word give me a word give me your word you might hear him say be healed you might hear him say be delivered you might hear him say keep seeking you might hear him say turn away from that person i don't know ask him ask him and get ready he said you ask you receive you seek you find you knock it's open to you Say, give me a word. Stop being like a baby bird waiting on some preacher somewhere to give you a word. God wants to give you a word. God wants to speak up in your spirit. God wants to declare and decree on the depths of your being. He wants to put a word in you. And when he does, no adversary can take it from you ever again. Say, give me a word, God. Keep saying it. Come on, cry out to him. I have to have a word. I won't live without a word. My bones cry out for a word. Now just pray in the Holy Ghost. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost, and as you are, He's going to reveal to your spirit a word. He's going to give you a word right now, right there where you are. You need a word. Go, stop, run, shout, give, seek, forgive, 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 have faith. Have faith. Be bold. Let him give you a word. And then start speaking that word. Speak that word over your life. Speak it. Speak it. Speak that word over your life. Every need is met. Every bill is paid. My body is healed. Speak it, it's his word to you. It belongs to you. It's for you. The third thing you find in his mouth is his breath. Job said there is a spirit in man. It is the breath of the Almighty. As you are speaking that word that he gave you, the Holy Spirit is anointing it. It is not you speaking but God speaking through you. Declare it, decree it, announce it, proclaim it, loose it. Speak that word. We declare healing. We declare joy. We declare strength. Speak your word. No, you don't need anybody to lead you. Speak it. Quit whispering it. Speak it. Declare it. Decree it. 
Get used to the sound of your own voice. Who cares who's around you? What's he saying? Speak it. What's he saying? Speak it. What's he saying? What's he saying? Michelle, what's he saying? What's he saying to you? He wants to heal you. What? He wants to heal you. Heal your mind, heal your body, heal your soul, heal your spirit, heal your family. Oh, he wants to heal you. you. He wants to heal you. He's coming in. He's coming in. Listen to him. He's coming in. Listen to him. He's coming in. He's restoring to you. Josh was the first one at this altar, and, and as Pastor said, he's not an overtly spiritual person. I've known him and his family for 20 some odd years. He's I've a, known him since they were born. 30, 31 years, 31 years he's been here. Graduate of Harvest Preparatory School, and the power of God is just all over him. And he's got a word. He's got a word for us corporately. Go ahead, Josh. Get down here if you would just it's not it's not about show just get down here this altar is for healing as was just said I needed this today bad and those around me know why I needed this today make a move and if you will get down here, things that have been on you for generations will break. But get here. Get here. This is the first time in my life of 31 years in this place I've held this microphone and stood here in this spot. So get here. Don't sit and watch. You sit and watch. Sorry. Sorry. I've thought about leaving this place many times over the course of 31 years but i wouldn't get what i'm getting today if i did That's right. i would not get this so whatever happened to you whatever your past is whatever your relationships are it does not matter because they're not it's not god That's right. he's the only one that can heal you people That's right. cannot That's right. do not trust people love them but God's the one who can deliver, not anybody else. That's right. That's right. 
Did you ever ask yourself, I'm haunted by questions. <clears throat> Did you ever ask yourself why people don't move? Yes. Yes. Why people don't move? God has said no less than five times, move. God has said, move. But the modern church, half the front line ought to be in the altar already. Because y'all just going through the motions. Some of you band members ought to be in the altar. Seeking everything but him. I'm not, I'm not rebuking you. I'm just telling you. you. You have a man standing here crying his eyes out under the anointing of God. But because it's not some big name preacher shouting and shucking and jiving. Well, all right. You're unmoved. God's word moves you. God's spirit moves you. And there is nothing ever sedentary. If you're not seeking God more today than you were a week ago, a year ago, 10 years ago, you ought to run and slide into this altar. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. Amen. I, I, I'm just tormented by questions like that. I mean, I promise you, if I said I've got a thousand dollar check written out, you can put your name on it. As many people as run to this altar, y'all run, you'd break your necks to get down here. And you know it's true. But the modern church, this is what we're fighting against. Yes, and yes. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Say this it. is what Dominion Camp Meeting is all about this year. Come on, we're going to break yes. these religious yes. curses yes. that are all over the church. Come on. We're going to break this entertainment spirit. Yes. Yeah, we're going to we're going to break it. I said we are going to break it, yes. and when we break it in this place, Come it's on. going to be broken all over this nation yes. and around the world. Yes. I found three more of my friend preachers who went on social media this week yeah. and said we've had it. Yes. The focus of our church is now to win souls, yes. and that's it. Hallelujah. Well, this is where that started. Do you understand that? Yes. This is not an ordinary place. That's right. This is an apostolic place. Yes. And it, this place is not just for this place. Amen. That's right. Come on, Pastor. Something's yes, going to break in here. Yes, it is. Something's going to break. Jesus. Huh? You've got to get down here. Stop sitting and watching. It will not happen if you don't make a move. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all and these then. things will be added unto you that's right then it will and then. but you got to seek him first yes. seek by getting here at that altar now. now I'm just okay that's six times that's six times we have in the modern church been trained that y'all are entertainers right, right. you're supposed to stand out here and sing your song right. no unction yeah. no glory i begged y'all to move how many meetings have i had move why did i build this platform why do you have a wireless guitar to move yes. then why are you standing here not one of you have moved. Not one of you. This is not worship. Yeah. Amen. Singing a song is not worship. Now this week, y'all better get a hold of God. I'm talking to y'all too, who are very distracted. It's all normal. We're getting ready to change a nation. Yes. That's why you're here. Yes. You're not here because you're a great singer. Yes. You're here to change this nation. That's right. And it starts with us. Yes. And as Josh told us, it starts at this altar. Yes. Stop being distracted. Stop. There's one thing for you to do this morning. Find him. 
for yourself. Find him. Find him. Find him. Well, I have enough of him. I don't have to move. If that was true, where's that woman? I saw her a minute ago. Huh? There she is. Come here. Come here. She's down here. She's down here. Come here. Come here. Help her. She was sitting here. They always sat right back there. Everything fine. No need to move. Got all of God. Try to bless me. I dare you. She has to have a belt on for to help her stand up. Because she went to bed the other night with a headache. Just a headache. The devil will kill you with a hangnail if you let him. This is no time. I don't care. I'm not here trying to win friends. No, sir. I'm not going to put on some trendy clothes and tell you what you think you want to hear in order to keep you coming to church so I can tell people how many people are coming to my church. This is not entertainment. No, sir. No, sir. And I want to get back to the New Testament model. I want to get back to that thing. You come in here lying to the Holy Ghost, you just fall dead. Yeah. All right. So you think that's quaint. All right. You don't know God. You think you do. Help us. You think you've got him all figured out. He wants to take you into things your mind has never even comprehended. Yes. But you're going to have to move. Yes. Thank you, God. I'll tell you, for 42 years, we have refused to go on with church when we don't sense the power and the presence of God. That's right, Pastor. Refused. That's right. And if that's uncomfortable for you, I don't know what to tell you. Because I only know how to obey him. Yes. And I move when he says move. Yes. Are you listening? Yes, sir. I said I move when he says move. Yes, you do. There, there she is. She's just like y'all. Well, I'm tired. Is that necessary? Well, I don't feel anything, so I'll just... Why wouldn't you want to get closer to him? Again, questions haunt me. And is she beautiful? She's always been beautiful. So, so... She went to bed with a headache. How many of you have ever gone to bed with a headache? Except the next day, she couldn't move. So they rushed her to the hospital. She had a huge brain tumor that she had no idea was there. But he didn't say, seek me about the brain tumor. How long do you think it took them to chase after God with everything in them? Come on. How long? When you went to bed with a headache and you wake up paralyzed and the next thing you know, they're cutting your head open. Would you seek him then? Would anything distract you then? Well, how do you know that's not you?
See, that's what we lose sight of. We lose sight of He wants to be our breath. Ha! Huh. I said He wants to be our breath, our hope, our joy, our strength. Not coming to a church service and being entertained by good singing and a preacher that's superpowered and some kind of program. Now, Father, we believe for total healing, complete restoration right now in Jesus' name. Loose her. Every sickness, every disease, every attack, every pain, every malady, every malfunction, come out of this body in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now stand against everything trying to come against you. I'd run to this altar if I was you. You take what the enemy meant for evil. Make it turn into Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Josh said I something's going on, my hands on fire. I gotta touch her. Hey, hey, hey. Join hands with somebody. Pray for them. Pray for them right now. Pray that they'd have a desire to seek God's faith. Come on. Pray that they have a want to. Pray that they can't live without the anointing. They can't live without another drink. They can't live without another dip. They can't live without a fresh touch. They've got to have some fresh fire. Pray, church. Open your mouth. Worship. Worship, honey. Thank you, Father. Pray. Seek my face. Thy face. Oh, God, will I seek? We seek your face, Jesus. Your only need, your presence. Rebuke hard heartedness. Rebuke complacency. Rebuke the spirit of death. Rebuke the spirit of death. Speak life. Speak life. Speak life. You're getting there. We need you, Jesus. You're getting there. You're forgetting about you. I hear a roar. We need you. Loose that lion, Zion. We are Nothing but Jesus. 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 I don't care what time I go home. I don't care about my dinner. I don't care about my lunch. I don't care about a sermon. I don't care about a song. I got to touch Jesus for myself.
of the Holy Ghost. Start prophesying. The spirit of prophecy is here. Frontline, get your mics in your mouth and prophesy. If you can, I'll lay hands on you. Prophesy. Prophesy. Don't just pray in tongues. Prophesy. Speak his word. Declare it. You're a spirit being. You're born again. You're full of the Holy Ghost. Speak his word. Declare salvation over your family. Prophesy. Prophesy a change to this nation. Prophesy a change in preachers. Prophesy a change in worship. Stop singing songs and worship. Father, we declare that all across this nation, Thank your you. Holy Spirit yeah. are arresting men Prophesy. and women of God, Prophesy. church Prophesy. leaders, pastors, ushers, deacons, Sunday school so teachers, oh, and that the status quo is no longer enough. Somebody get to walk in. Walk around and prophesy. But we are hungry for the presence of God. Walk all we over this building. hunger rising Get for your walking. presence. Hunger rising for Holy Ghost outpouring. Hunger rising all across this nation in churches to see your presence be made manifest. To see people walk in sick, but they leave healed. We declare they're going to walk in one way, but leave another way. They're walking in but they're walking out full of belief and faith and salvation. Be free. Shit. We speak that complacency is broken in the name of Jesus. In the church, we declare that no more complacent Christianity can go on in our nation and in our world. We declare right now that you are restoring the joy of salvation. No more hypocrisy, no more judgment in the church, but love, 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 love in our nation. Yes, we restore love the way that Christ has called us to love. In yes, Jesus' yes, yes. name. Jesus. Father, we rebuke the lie of racism. Yes. We are one people yes. with one voice and one God, and one baptism, one focus. We are the people of God. We take authority over every principality, over every power. Called according to your purpose, and we are your children. I 
Pastor, God gave you a word that from this place we would touch the world. And he's building on that word that from this place, from this apostolic ministry is going to come a greater prophetic, a greater evangelistic, a greater anointing that will not only move from this place, but through the churches of this nation and through the world. And I don't know who this is for, but some of you are sitting in the back and you've been watching and watching and watching. You've been enamored with the fireworks but you're afraid of the fire. Here's the difference. He said he will come as a refiner's fire and a fuller's soap, and he's wanting to bring purity and holiness back to the house of God because the fire of God will not fall on this world until it touches the church. Where did you go, Josh? Josh, the prophetic anointing is upon you now greater than you've ever known. You get ready. God is getting ready to move on you in a supernatural way. You and your wife, your life is going to be unlike anything you've ever experienced before. In the name of Jesus, touch him right now. Voice, shout like your life depends on that voice. It's his voice. Call in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Gifts of Elder Canfield. Go call in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. They're coming from the Holy Ghost, from the Spirit of God, from the throne of God. Hands the up. manifestation Shall gifts of the Holy Spirit being sprinkled, being outpoured like rain on the people of God. Who has a willing heart? Everyone who will say, Yes, God. Everyone who will say, I'll go, I'll stand, I'll speak. God is pouring out an abundance of rain of the out. gifts of His Let Spirit. Somebody shout and receive it here. them somebody hands say up. nine hands of them up, receive. get your hands up in the air hallelujah the vocal you're about gifts. to get something you've never had yeah. shout for it yeah my god there's fire Somebody believe God for the vocal gifts, tongues, and interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. My God. Somebody praise God for the revelation gifts, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and discerning of spirits. I have it! I have it! I have it! Somebody thank God for the power gifts. My God. Oh, my God. Oh! Oh my God. There is a major oh distribution my God. of power gifts power right gifts. now. Right now. Take it. Take it. Yeah. My God. Somebody is going to have an experience this week. You're going to meet somebody you've Prophesy. never met before. Prophesy. And all of a sudden, they're going to turn around and say to you, I've never seen you before. I've never met you before. I don't know who you are, but there's something about you that convicts me of my sin. Somebody needs to shout.
and I'm a healer. I'm healed, and I have healing power. I have healing power.